Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So we're marking once again the 65th anniversary of the death of uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt. I believe his funeral was held in Washington on April 15th, 1945. All of this uh, three weeks or so before the end of the war in Europe uh, and the end of the Nazi regime. Um, so Goldman Sachs subjected to a civil fraud lawsuit by the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, in itself a merely symbolic step, but if it's the beginning of something bigger, uh, we might be able to push it in the right direction. The goal in these things, of course, is always the Pecora hearings back in 1932-1933, uh, uh, a series of famous congressional hearings run by a guy called Pecora, uh, the, the chief counsel for one of the, uh, one of the committees or one of the congressmen, uh, which essentially put on display the shameless rapacity and predatory practices of top bankers, people like Charles Mitchell of Citibank. And this set the stage for some of the uh, significant legislation of the 100 days of 1933, including, I believe, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the original uh, act that set that up. Now, it's interesting that even this symbolic step by Obama is causing the Republicans, to come out with their true colors, which is the absolute defenders of Wall Street greed and abuses. Um, we had a, a, an interesting moment this week. Austin Goolsby, and you, I, you, you know what I think of him, right? Austin the Ghoul Goolsby of Skull and Bones uh, was somebody that I attacked already more than two years ago, uh, starting in uh, Obama the Postmodern Coup, which, by the way, you can get at tarpley.net online. You can order it through there. Austin the Ghoul Goolsby of Skull and Bones is the uh, head of the White House Council of Economic Advisors. He was on CNBC one of these mornings saying that the cause of the banking crisis is credit default swaps. Hallelujah. The cause of the banking crisis is a form of derivative known as credit default swaps. Now you'd think they'd say, well, ban them tax them out of existence, draconian regulation. What we have in the form of this bill that's going through the Congress is essentially a, a rotten compromise put together by uh, none other than Chris Dodd, uh, who is now on his way out of the Senate, can't get reelected, and he's obviously angling for a job himself as an investment banker. So the conflict of interest could not be clearer in the case of the unelectable uh, Dodd. So... Uh, Nevertheless, though, anything, even the most timid, symbolic shock, the most uh, insignificant step against derivatives, immediately causes the reactionary Republicans to run forward with the charge that communism and Bolshevism are at the door. And in the case of Mitch McConnell, the Pluto senator from Kentucky, the guy who thinks that the most important form of speech is money, who has built his house on corrupt political contributions, right, the plutocracy. This, of course, is the guy who presided during the, uh, during the George W. Bush years, right, the Tea Party characters say that they didn't like what Bush did. Well, he couldn't have done it without Mitch McConnell. Uh, you ought to target him a little bit, dear teabagging friends. Uh, McConnell rushed to New York City to meet with a group of hedge fund hyenas, tell them that they had to give more money to him and his minions in the reactionary Republican Party, and that only the Republicans could defend the Wall Street hedge fund hyenas from any kind of regulation of derivatives. And interestingly, the argument from McConnell is that if you do anything to regulate derivatives, then, of course, this is setting up new bailouts in the future, and we wouldn't want to do that. No, and of course not, says McConnell, who, of course, voted uh, along with most of his Republican uh, associates for a proposal that came from a Republican administration, George W. Bush and Henry Paulson, and their infamous bailout, the top of October 2008, the worst thing that government has done lately by far, much worse than the stimulus, which had some positive elements, but the top only payments to, to Wall Street. The other thing is today, the 16th of April, we hear Limbaugh on the radio, Rush Limbaugh, the great cultural populist, rushing to the defense of Wall Street. He says that the suit, the civil suit against Goldman Sachs is a political stunt. There's no basis of it. It's just part of a devious campaign 
by the Obama administration to say that the Wall Street guys are bad, that they're all crooks, that they've got to be brought to heel. Well, again, uh, this is uh, Obama attempting to get some uh, economic populist street creds. He's going to have to do much more than this. Uh, but even these timid measures, which are not even worth discussing, they're so insignificant uh, in this uh, derivatives uh, proposal, uh, this is enough to make the Republicans show what they really are, to line up in defense of Wall Street and the legions of greed and the gluttons of privilege and the princes of privilege who think that they run the government. Uh, so that's the situation now. In terms of um, the economic pers perspective, Soros, again, is shooting his mouth off. And Soros, uh, of course, talks uh, to some degree uh, what he sees coming uh, because he's going to speculate against it, as we see from Goldman Sachs. The prediction from Soros is there's going to be a super bubble followed by another crash because nothing, of course, nothing has changed except now the speculation is underwritten by government money. Notice that uh, Paulson and Company, implicated in the Goldman subprime derivatives fraud, let's call it a derivatives fraud because that's the operative element. The Goldman Sachs derivatives fraud involves Paulson and Company as well as Galleon Securities with this uh, now indicted guy, uh, Roger the Rat, Roger Ratnam. These, in particular Paulson, are people who are involved in the anti-Greek speculation campaign. And what we've seen now this past weekend is a meeting of the European Union uh, prime ministers and so forth, and they have created a $30 billion bailout fund to bail out Greece as they come under further attack. It's about $40 billion, I guess, at the current uh, level. Uh, Greece is now forced to pay 7%, and that will be going up when it borrows money. So the, uh, the people in the European Union have got no better idea than more bailouts, and we would say it's time to stop the bailouts. The bailouts, of course, were brought into the world by none other than Gordon Brown, then Chancellor of the Exchequer in London, now the head of the British government fighting for his life in the election, about which we'll have a few things to say later. Uh, we don't need any more bailouts. It's time to stop the bailouts and to wind up the bankrupt zombie banks, put them through Chapter 7, put them through liquidation. They are bankrupt. Sheila Bear, where are you? Every Friday we put out the call. Sheila Bear, when are you going to start enforcing the laws and regulations of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and shut down J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank, Bank of America, and the rest of them, the zombie banks of Wall Street and Goldman and Morgan Stanley. Back in a minute.